Good morning, y'all. Today I'm going to be doing a continuation of the tic-tac-toe game pieces. This time I'm going to show you how to use individual squares of fabric. So let, let's get started. Alright, so today I'm going to be stitching game pieces for the Santa game board and the Mrs. Claus game board. That'll be a set. And it'll have game pieces that have Santa's face and a game pieces that has Mrs. Claus's face. And each of the game pieces have some colored parts on them to kind of jazz them up a little bit. So I'm using tearaway stabilizer in my 5x7 hoop. You're going to have 4x4, 5x7, and 6x10 designs available to you. Um, <clears throat> And you can either use cutaway or you can use tearaway. Today I'm using tearaway. And for my stiffening stuff, as I call it, uh, you can use Peltex, Decobond, whatever. But today I'm using some Craft Fuse because I got it on sale at Walmart. A whole bolt for like a dollar and three, a dollar seventy-five for the whole bolt. Uh, they were doing a clearance because. They don't have a fabric section anymore. Not where they have to cut the fabric to size that you want. Uh, and I snatched it up, that along with uh, a couple of other bolts that uh, were just laying there. A dollar seventy-five or somewhere close to that. Less than two bucks. So, um, that's what I'm going to be using. This is the craft fuse. I just cut a six or seven inch width and by the the width of the uh, bolt, which is 20 inches, and I fold it in half. So let's get started. The first place, the first color stock that comes up is pink. You don't have to change colors for your bobbin or your top thread for these placement stitching and tack bands. So let's stitch the placement stitch because this is for your um, stiffening stuff. If you have a piece that's going to cover the tack band exactly as, or just a little bit more, which, you know, I'm going to measure this. So I want to show you, I printed this um, <clears throat> template out. And if you print your template, this outside line is your um, placement stitch. And it's four and three quarters. And just to show you, this placement stitch is four and three quarters. So if you have a piece of deco bond or whatever you're going to use to help make the game pieces firm. If you have a piece that's five or five and a quarter inches, you could lay this down to cover all the, the placement line and then um, stitch it down, which is what we're going to do right now. Let me put this down because it's a lot wider and I'm just going to lay it like that. All right, so... Now, color stop number two is blue, and it stitches the placement stitch. So what I do is I put the thread in the top that is going to end up being the thread that I use for the satin stitching at the end, and I'll explain that in a minute. So this is tacking down your stiffener stuff. This deco bond, like I said, I just cut it the full width of the fabric, the, the material, and about six and a half inches wide. I didn't need it that wide. I could have cut it a little narrower. <coughs> Sorry, my allergies are really bad. All right, so color stop number three of these game pieces are pink squares. And that is a placement stitch for your small square pieces of fabric. So I've cut these about two and a quarter. Uh, I'll accept one of the very last ones, and I cut them 
incorrectly, but they're pretty close. And I'm going to stitch the placement stitch for the individual squares. So you want to do your trimming as you go, especially on the back, because the way that this is constructed is it you place your felt on the back before you start sticking the stitching the design. So what you stitch on top is going to be seen in the back. So after each color that you do, if you decide to do these few little color spots that I have in the, in the red work design, the red work. Uh, what's the deal? Okay, my machine is giving me issues again on this stupid. Let me back up. Oops, I'm going forward. Wrong way, Regina. It's cutting the thread too short, and then when it starts stitching, <laughs> and I'm wondering if anybody else with a Solaris or a Luminaire has this issue that it seems to cut the 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 cut like right there is too short. Now it's going to do it again. You watch. Yeah, see. It's cutting it too short, and I don't understand why. It's not something that I have done when I threaded it. <coughs> it just seems to cut it too short. Let me erase that. Hang on. So if I don't remember to pull this thread, this thread tail out before it starts stitching, then it gives me a, you know, it stops and says you got to rethread. Yada yada yada. Out. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Because that gives me enough. Alright, that one looks like it's long enough. Alright, so it, tits, it stitches these placement stitches for you so that you'll know where to put your, put your how to center your fabric. Uh, squares <coughs> and if you just want to you know use up squares that you have in a solid color so you can see the design on it <coughs> you can or if you just want to put down squares all of the same color and use those different colored squares for each person you know that works too all right so now you need to put your squares down and Let's see here. I folded my squares in half and put a crease in them. I don't know if I can get this apart. Is there? Let me put my glasses on. Hang on. With this cold. Okay, it's just one. All right, so you want to try to center your square over, and these are just a little bit too big, but that's all right. Okay, so I'm going to. I can see my red peeking through this white fabric and if you'll notice on my demos I use white a lot for the game boards because I can see through them you just want to make sure that you have enough fabric on all sides to um, let me take this out because you're going to be cutting these with pinking shears to keep them from fraying. Okay, so once you get it lined up, then that that crease that you put in it should help you line these up. All right, and then we're going to tape them down on one side. All right, so I think this is the shorter one. It is. All right, so I'm just going to do it like that. And maybe did I... Okay, I'm going to turn it this way. All right. 
that. So now I'm going to tape this. Oh, I got thread tails here I didn't pick up, and this tape is picking it all up. I'm going to tape these down on one side. Now this is nothing but the 3M Micropore paper tape. It's the same tape that, um, oh, what's her name? Kimberbell sells, but it's a lot cheaper on Amazon. Don't tell anybody. All right. Yes, I was whispering kind of as a joke. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to tape it down on one side. Oh, don't move. Arr. Okay, so let's line it back up and turn it around. And line it back up. All right, so you want to tape down at least one side. All right. And if it stitches through the tape, no biggie, because it's easy to tear off. But you just want something to hold it down. All right, so color stop number four is going to tack down all your little fabric squares. You just want to make sure that it doesn't catch this part as it goes across and my my needle raises up or my presser foot raises up pretty high so I really don't need to worry about it. Okay, I could have scooted over this way a little bit more on this piece so I'll really be scrimping to get a uh, a good cut edge on that side with the whoops there it goes yep okay cut that back and let me back up didn't grab that thread I saw it too late that it was too short This is just a tack down. Stop that. This is very frustrating. And they say that they can't readjust this, how far this... I'd rather it be too long and not long enough. It's very aggravating. long enough so I'm just gonna let it stitch I love this machine I love my baby locks I, that's all I've had and this one is really the only one that does this cutting the thread too short thing like I said I'd much rather it cut it long than short the long I can deal with the short is very frustrating because the machine won't keep going okay so this is this is where you could get a little confused. Color stop number five. It is for a placement for your fabric or your vinyl or your felt or whatever else you're going to use or your fabric like I've used. <coughs> it would play, it would stitch, it would stitch this line again for you to place your fabric down it's a reminder now is time for fabric a whole piece then color stop number six I'm going to skip down 
is a tack down for your one piece of fabric but we're using squares here so we're skipping color stop number five and we're skipping color stop number six color stop number seven that is for your felt so let's trim these little thread tails like I said, I, you, you kind of want to keep this neat because if you've got thread tails sticking down, it could impact the way the back looks because your design will be seen on the back. And that way if uh, they get turned over, because one's going to use Mrs. Claus, one's going to use Santa Claus, unless you decide to put some other design in there, which you're more than welcome to do. All right, so we want to put felt on the back. Color stop number seven. And you want to cut cover those squares. You want to make sure that you're... Let's turn it this way. You want to make sure that you have equal amount of felt on both sides and we're going to tack it down we're going to tape it down on each side to hold it in place now this process can apply no matter what so far all we've done is do the shape of the game pieces which is always square I did round on the baseball and right. I regretted it immediately. <laughs> okay, so now, now that we've put our fabric, I mean our felt or fabric or vinyl or whatever you're going to put on the back, we want to stitch uh, the tack down and tack that backing down. And hopefully my fabric will be good. So this is just tacking down in place your backing fabric. So color stop eight is where your design for your game piece starts. This Mrs. Claus has three fill stitches that it's going to um, going to stitch. And if you want it to be the same color on the back, you need to change colors. Otherwise, it's going to stitch in whatever color you have in your bobbin. And then, like, if I use this white bobbin, everything would be done in white. There would be no color at all. It would be white for uh, her bonnet that stitches at the top of the bonnet, which is green here. And then I think it does her mouth in red and her eyes in blue. That's <clears throat> And her collar in red. So those items on the back would all be white unless you change the bobbin thread. And I'm going to do that. Now, if you've done any freestanding lace, you know that um, you have to match the thread when you do freestanding lace. Okay. Get this little disc out of here. So if you have a baby lock, I'm going to remind y'all, and you want to use pre-wound bobbins, you need to put this little thing in your bobbin case for your pre-wound bobbin. Make sure when you are using a regular baby lock bobbin that you have filled, that you take that little disc out. Because if you don't, it's going to stitch just a little few stitches and then you're going to get a malfunction. And you're going to go, now what did I do? Well, it's going to be that disc. And when you, a lot of times when you take the bobbin out, sometimes the disc will stitch, will stick to the, the pre-wound, and it's not in there. But always check and make sure you take this out because if you seat a regular 
baby lock bobbin on top of that disc, it's going to be too tall. You're going to get a malfunction. Okay? So, we're using a regular bobbin that I've wound from my top thread, just like you do for freestanding lace. And we're putting it in because we want the back to have the same colors that the front has. So if they turn the pieces over, then they're still gonna know what they've got and it'll look it'll look just as pretty. And I need green, hang on. All right, so I have green in my bobbin and green at the top. Now, if you've got a different design in your hoop, it's gonna be a different color probably. So you just have to go based on what your color stops are and look Use your software. If you don't have software, download Embroidery Toolshed and watch your design stitch and you'll see what color stitches first, second, and third. And you can look at your color chart that I give you to see what element that is that's being stitched. Because I know some of you have a small screen. I have an Alyssa, Alyssimo, a baby like Alyssimo. And even on that screen, sometimes it's hard for me to determine what is that that's going to stitch. All right, so I'm going to stitch her uh, the top part of her little bonnet or her headpiece. I don't know what what you call that. Her little hat, and it's going to stitch this in all the squares. And this is all it does: is stitch that green. All right, I will be back when they're all done. All right, so it's stitched all the green pieces <coughs> of her hat, and it's stitched all the green pieces back here, and we're going to trim these thread tails um, so they don't get in the way of anything else. Just like when you're doing earrings, you want to make sure at each color stop you trim your tails on the back because you don't want those tails getting in the way. All right, so your design could have a different color here. Like I said, this is going to be the kind of the universal instructions for game pieces. So go with whatever your screen is telling you is the next color. And for the Mrs. Claus, it's red. <coughs> so I'm putting red bobbin in because I want the red pieces to show up on the back of my game piece. And I'm putting red in my top thread. All right, so color stop nine. For me is red depending on which game board you're using it could be something else so follow your color chart <coughs> this is stitching the little berries that's on her bonnet and her mouth I believe and her collar So it's done the berries at the top up here. It's going to do in her mouth. And now it's going to do her collar. All right, so I'll be back when this is done. All right, I have stitch the red out in this Mrs. Claus game pieces. You would stitch out whatever <coughs> whatever is the you know the color that comes up on your game pieces. And now I'm trimming the thread tails on the back of the design. Just want to make sure that you trim them off because we want this part to look as much like the front part as possible and you could have put fabric back here if you wanted 
Uh, it just wouldn't have given the stability that the felt gives. Uh, <clears throat> but you could use fabric. You just want to make sure that what you're using for your stiffener it is really stiff because the felt does give a little more body than fabric. I really like using the fabric on the front. Um, it lets more of the design be seen. <coughs> and um, I just use a variety of white. So <coughs> it can real you can really see the front of the the game board. Kind of have a hard time walking and chewing gum at the same time here. So, yeah, talking and cutting. Um, just make sure you trim all your thread tails so they don't get caught up in the next step or in the or in the final step. Okay, so let me push all these thread tails down here. Sorry. So that's what it looks like so far. And looks like I've got all the thread tails. So I put blue. My next color on this particular game piece is, is blue for her eyes. And uh, I've got it in my bobbin and in my top thread. So I'm going to stitch. And it's just a little bit. But I'm hoping it'll be enough to that you can see it through the glasses that it's going to stitch. And I think it will. Okay, so it's going to go through and do the blue on each of the game pieces. And I'll be back. Alright, so it's just about finished with the eyes, and I've made sure that I've trimmed all my th thread tails on top of the game board pieces. So I don't have any thread tails that could get in the way. So color stop. I'm not even going to tell you which one this is, because yours could be different, but... I'll tell you, I'm on color stop 11 for Mrs. Claus. But on yours that you're doing, whether it's the candy cane or the gingerbread or the reindeer and sleigh or whatever, uh, your color stops are going to be different. So I'm on my last color stop, which is stitching all the, the red work, we'll call it, the line stitching <coughs> that forms the face. And I'm going to change my thread colors and trim my tails on the back. But I want to trim, I want to change my uh, bobbin thread to the color that I'm going to use on top. And I'm going to use a smoky gray. Actually, because it's sitting here, and I don't have to reach for anything else, and it's close to black. Okay, so now I want to trim all my thread tails for the eyes and yeah I know lots of thread tails but it it adds to the game board that just has the outline stitching and it just gives it a little pop so if you grab these thread tails right, you can get, you've got a start and a stop on all these tails. Okay. So I've got all those for that eye, and I grab all these for this eye, and I've got all my thread tails, so I want to make sure everything is clean and trimmed Got a little bit here all right so now we start the outlining and actually creating the the mrs claus look and i need to put my thread up in the top 
All right, so, you know, I guess you could stitch this. Let me turn this around, see if you can see the game pieces. I don't know how close y'all can tell that the outlining would stitch Mrs. Claus enough that you could tell who she is if you wanted to skip the colors. And the same would hold true, I think, in most of the boards or the game pieces because I don't fill them in. I just stitch more or less an outline type thing of it. And I've tried to get it that it's all a continual stitch and there aren't any breaks. So it will go over things a couple of times. There's, there is uh, one or two places on these that it has to stop and start again because I just can't get it to connect where it should. So it does stop and um, cut the thread and go down to do her eyebrows. She'd look a little odd without having any eyebrows, even with glasses on. So you are going to have some red tails on the back to trim on this one too. Now it's going to do her glasses. back when all of these are done. Alright, you can see Mrs. Claus is finished. Nice and easy to see on the fabric. <coughs> I'm not real happy with the back, but it looks more or less like her. I don't like this felt big on the back, and I have not tried it with fabric yet, but I think my next one I will. But I do like the front <coughs> on the fabric. Alright, so now we need to, the next color stop is the six heavy dark, heavy blue squares. That is going to stitch a, um, a zigzag around each of the squares. So whatever color you want your finished squares to be is what you need to put on. And I'm going to do mine in red. So I'm I am changing, I changed my top thread to red and I'm putting my red bobbin back in because I want the stitching around the back to be red. Alright. Alright, so like I said, this first one does a open zigzag around each of the squares. This is not the final satin stitch. It's the next to the last color stop. So it just puts down a little uh, double line for the open zigzag. This is the beginning of the end for your game pieces. So it's a fairly quick stitch. And 
this just helps um, keep all the pieces together really well and give the finished uh, look uh, a little um, a little nicer. So I'm gonna let this one stitch so you can see it again stitching. This is just uh, the next to the last color stop, which is a darker blue on your screen or in the color chart. And here again, watching this stitch on your computer screen is a whole, makes a whole difference. So, you know, download the, one of those free programs, the, the Dime or the Floriani, the Dime is Embroidery Toolshed. You go to floriani.com and look for their free software. And I, some of the others have free software. I can't remember who, who they are. But they all let you watch your design being stitched out. And it really helps to know how that stitches when you go to your machine or before you go to your machine. So remember, you're going to have a lot of little fingers touching these game pieces. And this base for your last color stop is a, a good way to help ensure that these will last a while. This would be something good that you can take to out to eat or to any kind of a function and not have to take those electronic games. Um, you know, make each one of the kids a different game board and then they can, you know, challenge the other with uh, their game board and they can take turns. So that finishes the the open zigzag, which is the next was the next color next to the last color. So the very last color is the red um, squares on my file. I, I try to make them all the same color. You've got the blue is the next to the last, and then either uh, brown or red or something like that uh, on each of the the. Um, game pieces and the very last color is your satin stitch going around each of the game pieces and that's what we're going to stitch now and i'm just going to press go because i'm going to continue to use the red and if you get a long thread tail make sure you trim it off right away because this does a really nice satin stitch around the game pieces. And you don't want any loose tails sticking out. So this finishes off the, the game pieces and it makes it look really nice. See how nicely that one is stitching out and looking really great. All right, Mrs. Santa is done. And there she is. So now we need to take them and trim them. Let's trim the tails off the back first, which there should just be 
this one at the bottom. On each of the game pieces. So you just gotta pull those tails up and trim. You've got one from the start, one from the end. Alright, so now we need to go over and trim the game pieces. Alright, so we bring it to the cutting table and unhoop it. And I hope you have a ruler that you can see through because it really helps. And I need to find my glasses. Hold on. Alright, so here's what I'm doing. I am putting the 1 8 inch mark on the inside of the satin stitching. I have my rotary cutter blade that does the little wavy lines. Okay, and you want to press down really hard with your ruler. Make sure you're lined up at a bottom somewhere that you've done your horizontal line and your vertical line one eighth inch and you can just put a horizontal line on you know one or two of the of the squares press down real hard and then you're going to use a sawing motion okay and that if you don't use a sawing motion then it may not cut here and you may not get that cute little wavy edge. All right, so we're gonna turn it around. We're gonna do the same thing over on this side. Gonna line up vertically, uh, horizontally and vertically. Okay, press down really hard. And make sure you've cut. And I've got a little spot where I haven't. So you've got to line up that wave and go back and cut again. That way you can continue that wave look. If you don't line it back up, then it cuts it kind of weird. Okay, so we got that side cut. I don't want to mix my fabric and my paper, sorry. Okay, so let's take and cut across the top. I'm lining up horizontally here, and I'm lining up my 1 8 inch mark on the side. And you got to press hard. So I can just do all these as long as you line up horizontally and then line up your 1 8 inch mark on the very inside of your satin stitch and press down hard. Alright, so that didn't cut. I'm going to line up my rotary and cut it. There we go. Those will have to be cut individually now. All right, lining up once again. Let's see if I can get a better. Sorry, because I'm standing on one leg here, so I've got to be able to keep my balance. <clears throat> I'm just going to cut this one by itself. All right, so I'm using a horizontal line to line up at the top across the top and I've got my 1 8 inch mark on the inside of my satin stitching just touching it all right so something stuck let's line it up line it up Here. 
All right, so it's the felt on the back. I'm just going to trim that. All right, so we've got all these little pieces coming together now that we have to go back so we can only trim what we can trim right now. So remember, let me get it over here where you can see. I know I keep repeating, but it needs repeating. So it looks like your ruler is right along the outside of the satin stitching. Remember, these have to fit inside the, the tic-tac-toe squares. All right, so I'm going to cut here. I lined it up. If it slips, stop and realign it. And use that sawing motion. Alright, so there's one cut out. That's what you want to get. Now let me get my board. Hang on. Alright, so here's the Santa board. And she fits inside that square. So when the other ones are put on, so say somebody starts here, then someone comes back and puts it here, and then uh, let me cut another one real quick here. Find one that just needs, yeah, she only needs an outside line. So let me line this up. Alright, so she would fit here. And then somebody else would come back and probably put one here. And then somebody would put one here. So that's why we need to cut the way we do. Is so that those fit in the squares. Alright, so that is how you do the game pieces. No matter what the design. Remember, the design goes... After the purple color stop, which is um, putting the back flannel I mean, um, felt on, and before the design starts, and then, <coughs> excuse me, the blue squares that come up is your open zigzag that goes around, and then your last color stop is the satin stitching that goes around each of the squares. That's the same no matter what board you're doing. <coughs> the number of the color stops change depending on how many steps there are in the game piece design itself. Alrighty, thanks for watching. Enjoy, these make great stocking stuffers. Oh wait, I wanted to show you too. Hold on just a second. So this is one I made, and I had stitched out some reindeer. So you want to stuff your game pieces inside. This is the reindeer game pieces. All right, and you want to stuff this one inside. And some of you may say, well, won't they fall out? I'm shaking it. They don't fall out. Even though they're open, they don't fall out. So if you stick them in there, like I did, those game pieces are going to stay. They're not going to fall out. You know, if you wanted, you could, uh, you could put a snap if you wanted on here to make it hold. But now I really shook from the bottom holding them, and those did fall out. But Normally, they'll pretty much stay in there. I think I had a hold of the bottom and uh, pushed them, actually, because I was holding on. There, it's turned upside down. They're just starting to, to move forward. Let's see? So that's where they are in the pouch. All right, I hope your kiddos enjoy them. I know my best friend, her... Sixth graders, they love taking these with them someplace when they're not allowed to use their um, electronic devices. So it keeps them busy. 
Thanks for watching. Enjoy.